Hey guys, Shelby here, and I uh, just wanted to touch on uh, a quick topic that we run across often with our clients, and this is gonna be directed at legitimately first-time home buyers. So if you are someone that hasn't bought a house yet, you're currently renting, or maybe you live at home still, and you're trying to figure out how do I get into home ownership, what does that look like for me? Maybe you've come into some money, some inheritance, or Maybe you've got a good paying job now where you're able to set aside enough money for a down payment. This is the video you wanna to watch to get a little bit of a grip on some of the options that you may or may not know about. So I always like to start with kind of what's the long-term goal of someone in your position. If you're looking to get your first property, what is that long-term goal? Are you currently looking to get into a home that's gonna be your forever home? In most situations, it's not the case. Most people are looking just to get into something to start getting into home ownership so that they can begin uh, building equity and they can stop paying rent. They can start putting their money into an asset that historically speaking has made good returns for people who invest in it. And so if that's the case, then let's go ahead and start looking at your first home a little bit more as an investment instead of like your forever home. And once we start making that differentiation, if you are looking for your forever home, that's great. That's pretty straightforward. An agent can help you accomplish that within what you're able to afford in your area. But if you're looking at a creative sense of, hey, I wanna start investing, I wanna create a good uh, conscientious investment in real, real estate that can potentially serve me dividends long-term, then let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. When you buy your first home, the benefit of being a first-time home buyer, especially if you have uh, income that meets uh, FHA requirements, so minimum income requirements, and these range depending on what you qualify for, but say you fall within those requirements, then you are able to put down as little as like 3.5% as a standard FHA loan, first time home buyer loan, and basically the benefit of that is coming out of pocket with less cash, and that 3.5%, that's kind of what the, the standard rate is for those qualifications. I've legitimately had first time home buyers come to the table to close with as little as $777, which is crazy to think about. But uh, between the way we're able to negotiate the deal, as well as what the lender was able to get them qualified for and some of the programs and incentives that were available to them, uh, they were able to literally come to close with under $1,000 on a house that was over $300,000. So that is something to keep in mind as you're doing this. If you're paying rent right now, uh, look at your market rents for your area per household or per uh, total property. So if it's a 3-2, what is the total rent? Is it 2000 a month? Basically, and work backwards off of what you could afford. And think of it from an investment standpoint. If you're young or you're in a situation where you, know, you don't need all three bedrooms, you can have roommates, that's even better. Think about buying a property that has three bedrooms or four bedrooms or maybe three bedrooms with a bonus area that you can convert into a fourth bedroom and then break down the rate of rent per room and have some roommates. It's not only super fun to live with you know, friends or people of similar interests or seasons in life, but you can also get your rent completely paid for. Uh, one of the first houses I bought had four bedrooms plus an office. And I had, uh, for a while, had one of the rooms rented out and he rented the room in the office. And that basically cut my living expenses in half for that property. And then eventually I had three roommates and those three roommates, in addition to my uh, unit, helped actually pay for my entire mortgage in full. So uh, I was living for free in a house that I actually really liked. It's almost 2000 square foot with a three car garage, four beds. I still had my office that I got to use and uh, basically living for free for a while. Uh, that's an option, right? And then when I went and segued out after a while and bought another property, um, that property was fully rented out and that one was cash flowing in a positive cash flow of around $700 a month or so. So that's one way you can do it is have roommates or something like that. Another thing to think about is if you're really conscientious about long-term investing, instead of going the single family route, you can also consider doing a multifamily, uh, meaning you know a duplex, triplex, fourplex, uh, one to four units, and you still only have to put down a minimum of that 3.5% 3 3 uh, down payment. And I've seen even with primary or conventional loan types, depending on what you qualify for, you can even get those down 
between three to 5% as well, which is still completely reasonable if you don't meet the income qualifications or you make too much money. Uh, but that's another route. So you can buy a single family house, rent out the other bedrooms, live for free, or you can go ahead and what they call house hack or buy a multi-unit as a primary with an FHA loan or a conventional minimum down payment loan. And basically, you know, like for instance, in my area, uh, probably a few years back when I was in a similar situation, I could have bought a fourplex in Meridian, Idaho for around $350,000, rent out the other units uh, for around $1,100 a piece and pay for my mortgage in, in spades. So that's an exceptional route to pursue and I would be coming out of pocket only three and a half percent of that total down payment. So that's an amazing, for every $100,000, that's $3,000, right? So you're looking at under 15 grand to get into a property that could potentially make you money every month. You no longer have to pay uh, rent and uh, your ROI on that property will probably be at a at a minimum, uh, you know, 12 months at, at, at or maximum like 12 months or so. Because if you start going into your opportunity cost, which means basically if you were to go a different direction, if you're renting for 12 months at even a thousand bucks a month, that's twelve thousand dollars out of your pocket. And if you start uh, looking at the tax benefits, the write-offs for interest payments and the historical equity gains that you would be losing out on, as well as the pay down that your roommates or other tenants of the units would be paying, uh, that becomes a substantial value that you're losing if you're continuing to rent. So even if it's a little bit out of your budget, it's really smart to consider some of these options. Uh, first one, again, single family multi-bedroom, renting out those other bedrooms to roommates, or using that advantage of having a primary uh, purchase and buying a duplex, triplex, or fourplex. The catch with that is that if you use that minimum down payment, you do have to occupy one of those units as a primary resident. So that means that per Freddie, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae federal guidelines, you have to occupy the property uh, as your primary residence for a minimum of 12 months. So a lot of people call this house hacking and you can do this every 12 months uh, technically speaking, right? So go from one to the next and snowball from there. Fill your unit as you leave. So those are two options to, to consider. A third option that would be uh, something you could consider if you're a little bit more of a handyman or you're a little more capable would be buying a property that maybe, uh, maybe it's smaller, maybe it's more affordable because the square footage is less just to get you in the door, like a two bedroom, one bath or two, one and a half but the lot can accommodate potentially either an addition or uh, some creative income where you could actually rent out space for parking an RV. Maybe you could do an RV pad and hookup for someone to do short-term stays in the area. Uh, those can accumulate income as well. I know friends uh, that you know do this and they rent them out anywhere between $250 to $900 a month, depending on what the RV pad consists of, if it's actually like a live-in parking spot or if it's just storage for somebody. Uh, you can also do billboard signage if you have a lot that's adjacent to like a busy or heavy trafficked area and it's permitted in your area to advertise uh, in that vicinity. That would be a great way to get uh, local businesses to pay for ad fees per month, maybe 500 bucks, maybe 1,000 bucks a month to have their sign and billboard up in the backyard. So these are all just different ways to think about real estate. So if you're a first time home buyer, really, I really challenge you to start thinking about what the long-term goal is for you. If it is just buying a home and getting into it and then figuring out your investment pathway later, that's totally fine and very easy for us to effectively do for you. But if it's gonna be more along the lines of let's start building something that has momentum long-term, highly recommend uh, discussing what those pros and cons look like. Have an agent that understands a rental market, what a, rent, a rental rate on a room would be, on a property would be, what rental rates on spaces would be in the property lots if you're gonna rent out areas and also figure out what it'd look like to house hack uh, a multi-unit. Again, a duplex, triplex, or fourplex. Once you get into five units, you get into commercial territory, it's a different conversation from the lending perspective. But those are things that you really wanna have front of mind as you're going into your first time home purchase. And these can really set you up long-term to get into that forever style home a lot quicker than you may think. So thanks for watching, you guys. I'm a real estate agent in the Boise, Idaho area. Uh, we work with buyers, sellers, investors, 
uh, and everybody in between. So wherever you're at in the process, we like to say there's no too early of a time for you to begin that conversation around real estate. And it is just really fun and interesting tool to get to, to know as you go. So give me a call, shoot me a text or shoot me a message below like some of the other folks. If you have questions, I can answer them on a video or give you a call or an email and we can go from there. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon.